A man on the Burren Hills says, Yes, they say blacksmiths have something about them. And if there's a seventh blacksmith in succession from seven generations, he can do many strange things. And if he gave you his curse, you wouldn't be the better of it. There was one at Bell Harbour, James E. Finucane, but he did no harm to anyone, but was quiet as another. And he's dead now, and his son's a blacksmith too. A woman near Cool says, a seventh son has the power to cure the ringworm. And if there's a seventh blacksmith in a family, he can do his choice thing. And an old man near Kiltartan says, blacksmiths have power. And if you could steal the water from the trough in the forge, it would cure all things. And a woman from Ardrahan says, a blacksmith can do all things. When my little boy was sick, I was told to go to a forge before sunrise and to collect some of the dust from the anvil. But I didn't after. He was far too gone. A drunken blacksmith at a village in the county of Clare, when asked by a friend who has collected many of these and other stories for me, if he had ever been to the famous wise woman, Biddy Early, answered, Oh, I never went to Biddy Early for a cure myself, for you should know that no ill or harm ever comes to a blacksmith. All I know is a door into the dark. Outside old axles and iron hoops rusting. Inside the hammered anvil's short pitched ring. The unpredictable fan tail of sparks or hiss when a new shoe toughens in water. The anvil must be somewhere in the centre. Horned as a unicorn at one end and square set there immovable. An altar where he expends himself in shape and music, sometimes leather aproned, hairs in his nose. He leans out on the jam, recalls a clatter of hooves where traffic is flashing in rows, then grunts and goes in with a slam and flick to beat real iron out to work the bellows.